Hey guys, this is Swift here and today I will be telling you more about my DIY NES rig and it's basically a DIY network attached storage um, similar to those that you can see in your uh, retail store such as Synology, QNAP, etc. And the main reason why I've decided to go the DIY path is mainly because of cost reason. Um, customizability as well as the um, the joy in doing DIY stuff I just enjoy creating and making stuff on my own um, finding out new things along the way is what I really is what really interests me as well so I've decided to go with um, a Ubuntu server and instead of uh, the various other options out there such as the free NAS and so on um, I decided with a Ubuntu server because uh, I've tried it out a little bit on my uh, unused laptop and I found that it's quite easy to um, use really to set up and so on and so forth the user community as well provides lots of support which is extremely important if um, if especially if I run to any problems along the way so without further ado um, this first part just shows you me constructing the rig itself the NES itself and um, right after this introduction you will uh, get to see the different parts that I've selected and I've I will explain briefly why I've selected the parts that you will see and yep that's about it so let's go on and let's see the different stuff that I've got for this um, NES So this is the motherboard that I've chosen, the SROG H77M, this is the Micro ATX motherboard and the main reason why I've chosen this motherboard is because here in Singapore the local support um, in terms of the warranty support, the distributor for this particular brand SROG is a very good company and um, the support they provide um, is uh, responsive and efficient and effective so and the price wise here in Singapore is that it's one of the most um, if uh, cost to performance ratio is one of the best among all the other motherboards so yeah this is the motherboard that I've chosen the H77M I've wanted the B75 Pro 3M if I remembered the model correctly but they were out of stock so I had to top up a little bit more for this particular motherboard so the considerations that I have when I've, I'm choosing my motherboard is basically both the warranty, the quality of the motherboard itself and of course um, the main thing is the number of SATA ports that it supports because I'm not looking to add in any PCI um, RAID cards or SATA cards as of now um, so I just want to base everything off the motherboard which this motherboard should provide enough support for the, f the years to come uh, it has 2 SATA 3 ports and 4 SATA 2 ports or, and provides RAID support as well so this will allow me to effectively have um, more than 6 drives in total and by adding in other PCI's uh, SATA card or RAID cards I can increase the storage drives to more than that of 6 so without further ado let's just do a quick unboxing of the card I mean the motherboard sorry and take a look at it so here you can see the front you can see here this tree warranty by um, SVU that's the company behind the um, the distributors of SROG here in Singapore and then nothing much here let's see at the top they have some of the quick specifications of um, the motherboard micro ATX as I said 2 DDR3 about 1600 MHz, um, one PCIe 2.0 x16 slot, one three PCIe 3.0 x16 slot as well. So pretty good there. There's USB 3.0 support as well. So just go next to the side. 
Here you can see Ingler support second and third generation Intel Core i7 i5 i3 processors so on so forth multi VGA output which is why I also have gotten this to the other side nothing much to the top same thing and at the back let's take a look at it so faster photoshop execution let's just bring it closer so five times low latency game all that good stuff which are just marketing gimmicks really so on and so forth so yeah let's just quickly take a look at the inside of the box so we'll just flip this around so here we go we have SATA cable two of them it's pretty nice the IO shoe manual driver and of course the motherboard itself not going to take it out as of now I'm in a rush to complete this NS rig so yeah let's move on to the next one which will be the processor itself so what I have here now is the processor that I've chosen is the Intel Pentium um, G620 and the main reason why I chose this is because here in Singapore there aren't any other um, processors that are suitable for my needs they are basically too overpowered or basically uh, either too low powered really um, so this is the one that I've chosen G620 there is another G530 I believe but um, for the price of just 20 more dollars I'd just rather get this the G620 and this should be sufficient enough and low power power efficient enough as well for the NES so let's just take a look at it and then quickly there's no need to unbox this, unbox this because they are just, just about it that's the G620 Intel Pentium processor Next for the RAM I have here is the G Scute um, value RAMs. These are basically the cheapest RAMs that can be bought um, here in Singapore. Um, these are four gigabytes each, so a total of eight gig of memory, DDR3 memory. The ratings you can see here: nine 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 twenty four at one point five. Boats. So these are just some really neat RAMs, very cheap and might as well just get two of them to run in a dual DDR3 channel for the NES itself. Yep. So the main thing of the NES is obviously the hard drives. Um, what I have here is two WD3 terabytes um, w Western Digital Green. I want to get the Seagate Barracuda. 3 terabytes, but uh, some unforeseen circumstances at the shop uh, saw me buying the WD Green instead. 3 years warranty that should cover me enough. Uh, and what you see here in the middle is basically a hard, my laptop, my very old laptop hard drive. That would be the OS drive um, for the NAS itself, which will be run off Ubuntu or Ubuntu. I don't know how you pronounce that. And um, but anyway that's right you can see here to your left of the screen to my left your left as well um, that that is the storage um, casing for the laptop itself so these are okay drives um, I didn't want to pay the premium for the WD rate rate and then RED rate as in color and I know they're rated for NES performance, the read write and stuff like that, um, the haters and so on are modified for access. Um, they are very related to NES users, storage users, but um, 
I guess I will just pass on that. The premium was too high. It was about forty dollars each. Sing dollars that is about thirty US dollars, which I didn't want to pay. So WD Green, that's it for the drives. They're going to be run off a single drive each, no rate at all. I don't find any need. Basically, the strategy behind uh, my NAS is that certain data from one drive will be backed up. Um, we have a shared backup of it to the other drive, so we have two copies of the important data, but that's not the whole drive, just some of the documents and files that are required to, that are more sensitive to, to failures. So that's right, just some data are backed up over, and then the rest will be placed here and here as well, leaving some space for the backup, of course, and this Seagate drive here will be for the OS as mentioned earlier. So next up, just quickly, I'll just grab what I have here for my power supply. Just hold on a second. There you go. This is the FSP 300 watts. This is the most readily available power supply that I could get that is of the lowest wattage and it's 80 plus it's a pretty good um, power supply read some reviews of it and um, it's very efficient uh, for low power usage like my NAS itself so yeah the lowest and it has four four SATA power cables here so it will fit just nicely you can just see the ratings quickly uh, that's about it Yep, this is really cheap hot, um, power supply. I don't need anything more powerful than that, really. And anything more powerful than that, uh, my, electrics, my electricity bills will be sky high as well. So there you go, that's the power supply. And lastly, we'll just take a look quickly at the case that I chose for the NAS. You guys can see here I have finally finished putting the gadgets together, the different components together. Um, it took me quite a while because I faced some difficulties in some of the things, such as um, the 2.5 inch over here. I don't have a proper converter and it was impossible to mount it. The case itself doesn't provide any kind of mounting options for the 2.5 um, 2.5 inch drives so yeah I had some problems there and I had to improvise um, what else is that uh, well I tried to do the hard drives it took me a lot of time especially with the 2.5 inch and as you can see here other than that I've installed two hundred one twenty millimeter uh, fans here to cool the drives and that's about it really so let's just take you through how it looks right now and this is honestly the best I could do I can do with the time I have right now um, you can see here this is really a pain in the ass this wire you can follow it all the way over there that's the CPU uh, power connector um, it's too short for me to do any kind of routing at the back or hiding it 
therefore I had to I had no choice but to go by this direct route from the power supply all the way to the CPU uh, socket itself. Other than that, um, such a wires don't have all black. I ran out and had to use a red one. Um, besides that, this the two Western Digital Greens here. And after this, let me just show you what's happening with my. Look at that. These are uh, twist ties over here. You can see here. They're basically suspending the hard drive that is currently simply mounted on just one screw one tiny screw and it's just suspended in mid air like that I'm not really sure this is going to be not too good this is not going to be good at all because it's a mechanical hard drive after all it's not an SSD all these vibrations and movements are going to hurt the hard drive itself but I have no choice and this hard drive is probably going to die sooner or later so I'm going to find another permanent solution soon we of course be getting a uh, adapter, 2.5 inch to 3.5 inch adapter, to make it more secure. Other than that, um, I've actually gotten this system running and installed Ubuntu and uh, installed SSH as well. So what I'm gonna do right now is to maybe just take a break first and then bring this down to the place. A floor below here to put it at its permanent location before I start it up again and SSH, SSH into it to start downloading and setting up the server itself, the file sharing and everything else. So yeah, um, that's about it. I will have other parts on the different configurations and the problems I face etc. in either video format or a written form. So that's about it, hope you like this video and if you do, do subscribe and like this video.